If you impose an intermediary between the worker and the engager before the onshore uh, employment intermediaries provisions, you could transform the nature of the relationship between uh, worker and engager. To counter that, government introduced uh, the onshore employment intermediaries provisions, which they substitute for the normal employment law test the question whether the individual is supervised, directed or controlled um, by the ultimate engager. That is government's attempt to restore the situation where the tax relief, uh, the lower tax burden, only goes to those who um, looked at in the round are self-employed. The consequence of uh, the onshore employment intermediaries provisions is that uh, many agencies, many intermediaries, who were in the business of transforming the relationship between engager and worker through the interposition of an intermediary, um, find themselves without a, a business model. Some of them have responded to that situation by trying to create uh, a picture of reality which does not in fact reflect reality. So if you're a proper subcontractor, the onshore employment intermediaries provisions don't apply to you. And so what many of the agencies have done is they've sought to portray themselves as proper subcontractors without actually being proper subcontractors. Uh, they continue in their role as, in effect, um, payroll agencies, but they pretend to be um, proper subcontractors. And it's very clear to me that that um, pretense does not work. If you are an engager and you are offered um, a contract uh, by an intermediary, uh, you would be sensible to ask yourself the question whether that contract actually reflects commercial reality. If it doesn't reflect commercial reality, you may well find um, that you are exposed to um, tax risk, the risk of uh, uh, individuals you engage under that contract being characterised by the revenue as engaged directly by you and being uh, uh, employed. Thank you.